working on the DVD extras is like stepping into parts of the story that is the history of the story. So a lot of the illustrations I get to do are stories that were before anything that we see on screen. One of the nice things about season two's extras is that we're actually exploring some of the characters that are in the show, but seeing a little bit more of their past, where they all came from, why they're the way that they are, and I think it's all going to add to what we're seeing. When you look at the map of Westeros and you're trying to work out where George has placed these type of characters, you start looking at the planet and trying to suss out what culture influences the characters that we've got on screen. I suppose it's some kind of stereotyping of cultures in the world. But fantasy works best if we believe it as being something grounded in reality. One of the great things about doing the illustration work was knowing that any of the work that I was doing was going to end up being animated, so that there was an extra layer of life that was going to happen to it. For the fans, I think it's great because this is also territory that they haven't really gone into because there may be one line that's described by George, and once you draw that or once you create an animation of it, it suddenly becomes something that's much more tangible, and we are helping to actually invent George's world. If we could possibly film this section of the story, that's another whole epic in itself, which is actually a very good idea. We should maybe go and do that. A long time ago, they say, some old southern king enslaved our giants by magic and forced them to build your famous wall. Then he kicked all of my kind to the other side and raised an army to keep us there. And we're the uncivilized ones. Wildlings. Might be Sir King was wise. Even a giant can be made to kneel. But only if he wants a better crack at your head. The free folk don't follow a man because his father tells us. If the king's son was brave and strong, aye, we'd follow him as we did his father. If he wasn't. But it seems to me, as much as the wall keeps us out, it keeps you southerners in. You follow laws you didn't make. Kneel to kings you didn't choose and pray to gods you never hear from. I traders talk about your seven. Beyond the wall, the stars shine bright and clear. Any gods there aren't listening to the likes of men. Our gods are of the forest. In the trees that shelter us and the rivers that feed us. They gave the land for all of us to share. We fish, farm and hunt where we will, when we need. If a man wants a woman, he has to prove he'll give her strong and cunning sons. It's easy. When she tries to slit his throat, he don't let her. With the free folk, you get what you can take, and you keep what you can hold. No more. I wonder, even if my kind didn't hop over your wall, would he still set your night's watch to guard it? You southerners are rich. You always have more of steel, gold, and daughters. I think you're afraid. If you've always knelt, and you don't know what freedom is. And if you've not been beyond the wall, you don't know what fear is. You will. <laughs>